Welcome to this section in cultural geography. We will be talking about the housing and the various types of housing. So what is housing? Housing is something uh, which acts as a shelter for us. So all of the animals and human beings have their own way of living or their own way of dwelling. And that place of dwelling is basically known as the housing systems. So in this session, we will be talking about the various types of housing, how the housing evolved from the past to the contemporary se uh, section, and what are the basic importance and the types of housing that we would be discussing. So the first is the Pluto Revival style. So this is a common style of housing where you have, uh, it's most popular in the southwest of America. So it's in, influenced by the ancient Plugos, which are the native in, uh, American Indians of the region. Main material used to build this type of houses are concrete, uh, adobe, mortar, and then you have stucco. What is stucco? Now there are two things that we must be clear of. One is stucco and one is plaster. So plaster is something which is used inside the houses or inside the building. On the other hand, stucco is something that is done on the exterior side. So stucco mainly consists of lime, sand, and water. And by composing all three, we make a mixture which is known as stucco, which is used on the exterior of the walls. So that was something that was used in the Plugo Revival this time. Now the current day stucco uh, in recent period, it is made up of not only what is known as uh, lime, sand and water, but what is mixed these days is the Portland cement, which is a substitute for this. So in this, you have the exteriors which are rounded. So you have the rounded edges with the square windows. As you can see in the figure, you have a square windows here. You have uh, enclosed courtyard, and you have everything which is on the flat, uh, flat base and flat roofs. So that was what was the Plugo Revival style. Now we come on to the next kind of style, which is known as colonial style. This is the most popular housing style in US. It's usually two to three stories. Uh, the roofs are high pitched. You have big chimneys on the top. You have uh, clapboard sidings, which you can see on the side. Then uh, you have things which are uh, glass, made of glass, and they are symmetrical. Like you have one in the center and equal, uh, similar size on the two sides. And they have a decorative crown. So they have just a decoration on the top. Mostly the support system in these types of buildings are the uh, columns or the pillars. The next common style is Cape Cod style. This style was brought to US in 1600 by the colonials uh, and the English uh, Britishers there. Most common phenomena here is there is usually one chimney at the end and the chimneys are not that massive as the colonial style. Uh, it's nearly one and a half story building. It has clapboards, shingles and it's made up of bricks. You have hardwood as a floor. Then you have uh, multi panes uh, for windows. And you have decorative gates. So this is the common style which was used in US during 1600s, brought in by English colonial system. This is the cottage style. This is something you have a masonry kind of chimney there. Then you have a, a nice corridor, a good sitting garden. You have wood sidings on the wood. Then it's surrounded by flowers okay, uh, along the sides. And you have big windows and gates. So here are big windows here. So it's a cottage style common these days in the uh, national park regions. You can find um, places to do a like cottage style. Okay. Next is craftsman style. This is a classic example of Arcan architecture. The downtown region, you usually have the craftsman style of building. It's low pitched. You have exposed rafters. You have decorative beams on the side. As you can see, here are some small designs on the beam. It's again made of wood, stone, or stucco as the outer material. Then you have small windows 
uh, which are usually in groups. So you have one window here, then you have group of two windows at the back of this tree. So you have, uh, it's made up of organic colors uh, and natural material. So that's what is the craftsman style common in the downtown region. Then you have the farm, uh, farmhouse style. It's a kind of simplified Victorian style, we should call it. It is asymmetrical in nature. None of the sides of the building match with one another. The windows are tall. As you can see, there are, the length is more. Then you have lab sidings with moldings and trimmings. And you have beautiful kind of um, roofing system here. So that's what is the farmhouse style. This is common in the farmhouses in US. The next is Federal Revival. Federal Revival is, it originated in British, Britain or England. And it was common in US in 1700s. So 1600s we have the colonial style. Then 1700s we have the Federal Revival. Federal Revival is basically two-storied building. You have big chimneys. You have a center big front door, as you can see here. Uh, then you have, on the top, you have the portico, which is put up. And you have fan-shaped uh, lighting system here. Then you have Palladian windows. The kind of windows you can see here are Palladian windows. Inside, the rooms are oval in shape. And you have niche walls. The next is Georgian style, uh, Georgian Revival style. This is again common in US since 1715 to 1780s. It is made of brick and woods on the sides. You have a square shape or it's more of symmetrical unlike the uh, Federal Revival, uh, the farmhouse style. Then you have middle pitch roofs. You have chimney at the end of each housing. Then technically there are five windows and a door in the center. There are in all nine to twelve panes on the windows. The next is the Victorian style. As you can see, this is also known as Queen Anne style. So it's a kind of royal uh, or lavish living style, uh, common with ornamental work, decorated with an ornamental work. You, as you can see here, you have all the works uh, done. Then you have narrow and tall window systems. You have a lot of columns as you can see on the bottom. Then there are decorative wooden brackets on the side. You have uh, around eight exterior colors. So it's made up of different colors. And say on an average, there are eight colors that are used in the exterior wall to paint. The next is shingle style. It's considered, it was, these were considered as vacation homes in England. So it originated in 19th century. It's a kind of variant for the Victorian housing that we discussed before. You have shingles uh, on all the exterior walls. Then you have a stone chimney. You can see good porches. You, uh, the corridor is a bit asymmetrical. Then you have dormer windows. And on the bottom, it is all paved. The next is Greek Revival. So Greek Revival was common in 1800. You have double story, two story. The roof is shallow, shallow pitched. Then you have front facing pillars. You have clapboards as the exterior paint, uh, the exterior material. Then you have decoration on the gates. And you have small moldings at the corner of the pillars. The next is Italianate style. That's a common Italian style. Uh, the, these are the common villas in Italy. Uh, then these, these were brought to US during 1800s. So they have decorative corbels and window corners. So you can see, as you can see here, the window tops are decorated. And again, on the gate, you have nice decorations. The entrance is columned. And you have rectangular windows in general. So next is international style. International style, what is important is it is the concept is less is more. So you have a lot of free flowing space, and uh, the aim is to uh, decrease the congestion in the region. So a lot of free space around, flat roofing, big glass panes. Uh, it uh, it takes natural geometrical forms. Then you have open interiors. It's white stucco or wood on the exterior, and you have big porches inside. 
The next is Mediterranean Revival. This was brought in by Spanish colonists, people from Spain. And so mainly the region where these buildings were found are the southwest regions of the United States and California. The exterior material is again stucco, as we discussed previously. You have clay tiles. You have good balconies, which, are, uh, which have good railings. As you can see, you have a balcony which is rounded and it has railings. You have terracotta as the pavement material. Big window panes made up of uh, clay tilings in the interior. Then you have ranch house. Ranch house was common in 1950s and 60s. These were built on really, really very cheap lands. These were known as economical houses. They are single story, uh, low pitched roofs. You have big ground area so that you can put your all pet animals around. Then you have sliding glass doors. Then you have an attached garage. Uh, here is a garage. And it's a very plain look and a simple look. And it's one of the most economical houses since we have discussed. Then you have southern colonial style. You have one chimney at the end. The steep slope, uh, the slope of the roof, roof is very steep. Generally, the house is symmetrical on both sides. You have multi-paning windows. Then you have narrow floor plan. You have a garden around it. And you try to protect it, this region from moisture. So you have tall foundation. That's the ceiling is on a bit height. So that's what is the southern colonial style. Next is the Spanish colonial style. This is common in, again, southwest US. So you have big walls, solid walls made of stone blocks or stucco. Then you have red clay on the exterior. Small, small windows, as you can see. Very small windows and very big gate. And then the roof is uh, flat or low pitch. The next is Tudor style. It's something what you see in the fairy tales castles. So it was popular in the United States in 1920s and 30s. And it again revived in 70s and 80s. You have highly steep roof, big chimneys. Then you have the exterior, which is made of brick and stucco. Then you have beautiful decorated gates and very long and tall windows. A beautiful garden on the outside. So something similar to a fairy tale castle. Uh, then we have Art Deco homes. Art Deco style is a style com uh, coming from Egypt, common in the Hollywood and the Miami Beach. You have flat roofs, smooth as stucco walls that is on the sides. Then you have rounded corners on the edge, as you can see, rounded corners here. It's mainly, mainly used for office buildings and it has beautiful exteriors. The so next is neoclassical style. This style reflects the Greek and the Roman style of architecture. Common in early 20th century, common mainly used for government buildings, then federal offices, then you have universities. It has symmetrical building, tall columns, big doorways, and spaced windows. So the best example is Thomas Jefferson's Monticello in Virginia for neoclassical style. Next, the most popular style these days is the contemporary housing. You have very big glass panes on the both the floors. Then you have natural sliding material for covering this. So it's either wood or a stone. It, the shapes are irregular. It's ornamental. You have a very good floor plan. It's mainly used for cathedral ceilings. And then you have for exposed beams or flat roofs. Then you have the prairie style. It's made of very simple material, big open floors, huge window panes. So this is all window, all glass panes. Then you have rows of windows that are coming up one after the other. So completely covered in horizontal lines and in a organic or definitive patterns. The next is townhouse, the most popular style in US these days, common in urban areas. You call it row houses. So each house is attached to one another. You have a common boundary wall between the houses. It was very popular in early 19th century. It came up due to the limited availability of the space and it caused financial benefit to the builder. So they started building row houses. Row houses are usually two or more story. You have a side uh, hallway and a mini uh, lawn in the front. Next and the final is the oriental style. 
this is something rooted to Chinese culture as we can understand from the name Oriental. So it's rooted to Chinese culture. You have curved roofs with beautiful exteriors on the walls and it has a very beautiful landscaping on the sides. So these are the various types of housing and the housing patterns that we have discussed today. This is an integral part of the cultural geography and human geography section. Hope you like this section. In the next topic, in the next classes, we would be continuing with more topics on cultural geography, that is language, ethnicity, and religion. Have a good day. Okay.